I grew up on Salt Spring Island and I played high school basketball there. Um, I would say I wasn't the best player in, in my grad class um, in grade 12. I was definitely one of the top six. Our team was really good in my grade 12 year. We were ranked in the top five in the province and from Salt Spring that's a big deal because like Salt Spring almost never gets in the provincial rankings. We ended up kind of choking and not making it to provincials which was upsetting but uh, I tried out to play college after that um, at Camosun and Malaspina which is now VIU in Nanaimo and both teams basically uh, didn't really look at me I felt like at the tryouts because of uh, definitely like my height going in I was I, I was pretty scrawny too back then um, so I think that uh, they, the coaches didn't really give me a look I also definitely wasn't as skilled as I am now so like I can understand why I want to make the team but I also felt like I didn't really get even a ch fair chance um, and that was at age 18 so after I didn't make college teams um, I actually ended up playing badminton for a year or two at uh, Malaspina and, and uh, at the college level, which was a cool experience, but I always was more passionate about basketball. So I ended up uh, kind of giving up my playing career at that time um, and then just continuing to do other stuff in life, but always knowing like I want basketball to be a part of my life. Um, got into coaching at age 24-ish. Uh, I was living at home on Salt Spring Island at that time and I'd come home from traveling. I didn't really have my life together. I was living with my parents um, and I coached the senior boys on Salt Spring Island that, that year. And then um, after the season was over, I guess I played in an alumni game on the island and I played pretty well in the alumni game. And one of my friends, uh, his name's Dylan Marsden, he actually decided he'd play college ball as well. And he was like, yo, you should, think about playing college basketball because you're pretty good and I was 25 I had nothing going for me and I just felt like it's I might as well try to like play again so um, I started training every day I started cutting out like all the negative things in my life including you know drugs and alcohol and um, I just started putting in like more work um, on my body as well as on the court and then ended up trying out again at age 25 at VIU, uh, got cut after the first day, even though I thought I had played pretty well. Um, again, I didn't really feel like the coach, and I, I talked to the coach after and he said he's just not looking for like an undersized guard. And then, um, and then I went to Douglas, got cut there, uh, uh, still had the full tryout. The coach actually was pretty nice to me, but didn't, didn't make it. Um, went to Camosun and the coach liked me, the head coach liked me, the assistant coach after the first day we did all these like two ball handling drills um, so I'd never like practiced with two balls <laughs> much in my life before that and I wasn't that tight with my handles with two basketballs and the, co the assistant coach is this like old guy and he just basically told me that my handles aren't good enough to be a point guard at the college level and he also told me I should just like stick to coaching and, and kind of I'm too old and, and too small and my skills aren't good enough to play any more basketball at the college level. So um, after he said that, I still came back for the next day for the tryouts, but I ended up not making it and I just felt like maybe he was right, like I should just stick to coaching. So I stopped, that was in April of, of uh, 2013, I think, and I, um, took a break from April until about July. I realized Cap Capilano, which is in North Van, which is kind of where I've been living for the past 10 years. So it was, Cap was kind of the, the school I actually wanted to go to the most out of all those colleges. But I just wanted to see where I was at with all the other colleges. And Cap actually had a new coach that year coming in. So they didn't have their tryouts yet in July. So I started working out with the team in August and well, there was only a few of us that would come to like the workouts in the summer with the new coach. Um, so he really got to see me play and I got to actually show like what I can do in like a two, we were playing like two on two, we were just doing shooting drills, different things like that. And I 
felt like I excelled at that. So that coach gave me a redshirt spot uh, for the year. Um, halfway through the year, he offered me a spot on the roster because some guys dropped out. Um, I, I felt like I was definitely improving and putting in work like at a higher, like everyone else on the team, I would say compared to what I was doing, like outside of practice time, I was like doing a basketball workout and a, and a gym workout as well as practices like every single day. Um, and then I also had a full-time job. So when he offered me the spot on the team, I, I couldn't really take it because my full-time job was at the same time as, as the team's games would be. So I ended up declining it, um, which was a decision I kind of regretted for, for a while because I, at the time when I made the decision, I just thought I didn't want to use my year of eligibility, maybe not get a lot of playing time. And I was planning to maybe play college for a few years. Um, but looking back, it was like a pretty good opportunity and whatever happened with my job, I, I felt like maybe I should have just took, taken the opportunity to play because that was obviously my goal and my dream. Um, the next summer, I tried out again for CAP uh, and I was, felt really good about the, the tryouts, like ID camps. I was basically definitely one of the best players like as far as like just um, the, the, the way I was able to score in the, in the scrimmages and stuff, and everyone was saying that, and everyone was telling the coach, like, you can't not take Yoni this year. And he still only gave me a redshirt spot, but um, might have had to do with the fact that I, that I didn't take the roster spot when I had the chance, so maybe he just felt like he shouldn't give me another roster spot. I don't know, but um, ended up, after that, kind of, just deciding I would stick to my to training other players and, and coaching and my end goal was always to be a basketball trainer. Um, I think the playing side of things was something that I just wanted to prove to myself and to everybody in the community that I am able to like play at a college level and able to like be, um, I feel like you get a lot more respect as a, as a coach and as a trainer when you've played at a higher level. So, I, so after I stopped playing at CAP, um, I'd say I took a bit of a break from playing and I was, I was definitely trying to focus on training other players. Um, while doing that, uh, I would essentially continue to put in work on my, on my own game. Um, fast forward to this past year, actually, uh, it was a year ago at this time, right, right around Christmas, and I saw on Facebook that it was like, um, there was a Facebook ad basically saying like, oh, if you wanna, if you think you're good enough to play professionally in Vancouver, there's this team coming to Vancouver called the Vancouver Knights. And I responded to the guy and he was like, yeah, come to the, the training camp. It was like a week long camp at the Richmond Oval. And it was right after Christmas. I didn't feel like I was in the best shape of my life, but I figured I might as well like give it a shot. I, I just put in some work to kind of get ready for a couple days and then I, I missed the first day of training camp, which was, I think, Boxing Day. And then I went for the next six days, two a days uh, to, for, the, for the training camp. I showed up, I was like, <laughs> it was basically just a bunch of like American athletic, taller guys. Um, and I, when I first showed up, I was like, I don't think I should be here. <laughs> I, I almost turned around after seeing who else was there and then I, just whatever went for it and ended up um, like doing okay. Everyone was super, all the other players were like really supportive, I felt like at the tryouts. I think everyone was trying to be nice to show the coach that they're like good people and all that. Um, and then I was probably one of the better shooters in the, in the, in the training camp. Um, we did like different shooting drills and stuff like that and I was pretty much always like the, the top shooter. Um, I don't think my ball handling was showing to be good enough to be a point guard at that time. And that's what kind of the coach told me. He said, you're too short to be a shooting guard, um, even though you're a good shooter, and you need to improve your handle so you can play the point. Um, and like, we basically had full court, uh, four quarter games at the last three days, we had three games, and he put us into teams and we played with the same team for three games. And the first game I played really bad, 
I had five points. I came off the bench and just didn't do that well. Second game, right before the game started, the coach basically said, "There's like," um, he said, "There's a few of you guys that are right on the cusp of like making the team or not making it." And it, when he was saying that, he was like looking at me. I felt like I was definitely one of those guys. It was right before the game started, and he says, "Like you guys, like you got to show what you got this game. It's like your last chance." And um, I ended up. What's really crazy too is like that during the training camp, literally like the day, two day, no, the day after I didn't play well, I changed my form, <laughs> my shooting form, because I'm really obsessed about how I shoot, and I changed it to be a lot quicker. It's just like a different form that I kind of go back and forth between two forms, and my one form's a lot quicker, and I and I just for like the whole morning and 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 the night before I was just like working on my the new form and I got in the game and I, I played pretty well. I hit like five threes um, and just had like 20 points and and, uh, and we won by about 15 points and I definitely hit some key threes to like put us ahead. Um, and then, so after that I was like, okay, maybe I have a chance. And then the next day we played it, the third game I had 23 points, hit four threes um, and just played point guard actually most of that game, played solid. Um, and then ended up making the team, but kind of as a reserve. Um, so there was a certain amount of roster spots, same kind of thing. Um, I still got paid to play basketball, which was, which was kind of like cool uh, opportunity because I never thought I would be come good enough to like play at a professional level. Um, and the guys I was playing and practicing with on the team, like one of the guys played I think in the NBA for a minute and just like played in the G League and different guys like that these are guys I was competing against in practice which was a really cool opportunity um, and then I played uh, I basically only got the opportunity to play in one game um, with that team and then the team ended up kind of folding they didn't do a very good job of promotion um, there was a lot of politics involved with the management I won't get into but it was a uh, not a very well-run team, and they just didn't get enough people out, I guess, to make money, and they ended up folding after a few months. Um, and then from there, I got an opportunity to play with this team called the Vancouver Dragons, which were a semi-pro team in Vancouver. They, they recently uh, have started, and I've played about five or six games uh, with and against them. So I've played with the Dragons, and I've played against the Dragons, and the opportunities I've got when I've got minutes to play against them, uh, I played pretty pretty well. I, I've been happy with like the the um, way I've been able to like just show that I, I have improved at basketball, and I felt like I've proven to myself at least that I I can play at a high level because everyone else I've been playing against on the Dragons, every single player has played college or university professionally. Um, they're all like well-known people uh, in the basketball community and I've definitely looked up to a lot of them and like have so much respect for a lot of them and and then I'm like looking at myself being like I can't believe I'm like able to compete with these guys because um, you know I, I can barely even make a college team so I, I think it's just like for me it's, it's just a testament of like if you continue to put in the work eventually your skills just get there and and, it, and and like a lot of kids that are shorter, like myself, I think um, hopefully can relate to that idea because you get counted out a lot when you're a shorter basketball player. Um, but if your handles are tight and you can shoot the ball from anywhere, like you, they really can't like say anything as, as long as you just have to be a lot more skilled than the, the rest of the competition. Yeah, and as I said, like my goal was always to become a trainer so um, as you can see we're in this little gym here that I've got some access to um, and my my goal still is to to train uh, players um, and help them develop and help them you know realize they can achieve their goals with basketball as well no matter how tall or or how good they are at a young age like you just got to keep putting in work and and anyone can can make it if they have the right work ethic and the right attitude, in my opinion. 
Um, so that's definitely what I'm looking forward to now. And um, the, the purpose of me playing at these different levels isn't to like boast or anything like that. It's more just to sh try to prove to younger kids that it is possible for anyone to make it.